Good evening and welcome to the Nobody Asked Me Guy Show. Guys, listen, we have a fantastic, fantastic guest with us this evening. We have none other than, may I say, AKA first, Dr. Mom, Dr. Delene Mizliak. Uh, she was born in Guyana, South America. Her parents are both pastors. And listen, I had the pleasure of talking with her dad several weeks ago. He's a very pleasant gentleman. And let me say again, uh, if, if I may say Dr. Delene and Dr. Mom, let me wish your parents a happy anniversary. I understand they just had an anniversary recently. They did. And I want second. to wish them both a happy <laughs> Now, Dr. Mislak, uh, she has traveled the world over. And, and, and having pa parents that are pastors, uh, obviously, she's sharing with us that she had the opportunity to travel to several countries. Uh, even as, as a very young person, she has an older sister who is one of her mentors and best friends. How about that? You know, sometimes we have this sibling rivalry and we never get along. And when people hear someone say that, that their sibling is their best friend, that really is a powerful statement. So, uh, you know, we'd, we'd like to congratulate them both for that. And she's saying here, being a pastor's kid, you know, can really be tricky. And we all know about the PKs, right? We, we all do. know about the, about, the, about the stigma that's attached to PKs. Now, uh, uh, that's not always the case. Uh, you know, people say, you know, they're bad and all of that kind of thing. And and what uh, Dr. Mom is sharing with us is that's not always the case. Now, she's saying from a very young age, she wanted to be a physician. And uh, she knew that it was a call of God. Uh, was, was The call of God was on her life, I'm sorry, uh, not only to be his servant, but a servant to others. With the opportunities presented to her, she preserved and fulfilled her dreams. And she says, it's funny how so many people try to deter her from going to medical school. And that's something that I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Muselag to share with us as, as we get started. But I gotta share this with you before I go and, 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 and introduce Dr. Muselag to you guys and just shut up and listen to her. Now, Dr. Muselag feels very blessed for multiple reasons, but especially for her amazing husband and triplets, AKA the Tripsies. They are Luke, Ethan, and Alina. Uh, they've added to the excitement in her life. Uh, she says, when you find out you're having a child, much less multiples, <laughs> the joy that fills you is unexplainable. She says, Matthew and I were praying for twins and got triplets. God threw in an extra blessing for us. Wow, that's strong. Now, the full-time physician, super mom of triplets, wife, author, and entrepreneur, Dr. Muselak has somehow managed to find time to start her own show. Thus, you've heard me allude to that several times. It's called the Dr. Mom Show. Now, also, Dr. Musliak is a writer, and she's excited about that. So without further ado, please allow me to introduce Dr. Delene Musliak. Dr. Musliak, good evening, and, and we're so happy to have you with us. I'm so excited to be here again. <laughs> well, listen. <laughs> We we won't even we won't even worry about the last time. We won't. <laughs> we know that Murphy's Law is in full effect it on is. a daily basis. <laughs> so we are going to dismiss Murphy, and we are going to ask God to bless Murphy. That's right. We're going to proceed now, if you will, if if you share with us, you know, you were. Uh, I was looking at as I was reading your your bio, and and I call bios resumes, by the way. Some of my friends will ask me, why do you call a bio a resume? I said, because for me, in essence, my bio is a resume. <laughs> so I just kind of use that sometimes in a sarcastic manner, but a very matter of fact manner. Now, you, you were saying that, that that many wanted to, if I can use the word, deter uh, you from becoming a physician. Will you share, share with us why that was the case? Um, you know, I don't know why that was the case. I know. <laughs> You know, I know one mom, my mom initially said, hey, are you sure you want to take that road that's so long? You know, it's a long road. It will be years on years on years. Um, but she she didn't try to deter me per se. I think she just wanted me to be sure in my decision because it was a long term decision. But there were some people in church um who would come and just randomly say, are you sure you want to go to medical school or is, you know, is this what you want? But I never had that. I never second guessed my decision. Um, but I, but I'm not sure. I think ultimately it's just the enemy. I think the enemy 
knew what God had planned for me and knew that this was specifically my calling. And I don't think, you know, I don't blame those people per se or say like, you know, why are you asking me that or get upset with them? Because I know the enemy can use anybody or attempt to use anybody um, to try and bring you down or, you know, have you look away from what really God has planned. So absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you for sharing that. Listen, I, which is the perfect segue into we, we not only are you a mom, you've written a book called Tripsies, and we're not going to wait until later to talk about Tripsies. <laughs> let's 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 talk about you being a mom and Tripsies and how yes. that book came about. So, so my uh, Tripsies and me, it's called the Tripsies and me. Uh, that came about because I really just wanted to share one as a pediatrician. Um, I, I just wanted another, something else to offer my parents. And I also just wanted to show them, I always get the comment, oh, being a mom's probably so easy for you because you, you know, you're a pediatrician, but let me clarify, it is not <laughs> It's your own child and there's blood involved or something else. You know, you get flustered just like anybody else. And um, I think it was to show that, you know, we're a regular family. We're human beings like everybody else. You know, when we found out that it was three, I mean, we were just as surprised. It wasn't like, oh, you know, hey, I'm a pediatrician. Bring it. I was in tears. <laughs> <laughs> My husband was so excited. Matt was so excited. I was in tears, I think more so because you know how they say ignorance is bliss. But as a pediatrician, the first thing that came to my mind was, um, oh my goodness, they're going to have to be in the baby ICU and they're going to come early. Like kind of had this flash of all these negative thoughts. And finally, when I calmed down, I said, you know, God put these three babies there and it he'll he'll take care of them. But really the book was just to share our first about like six months to eight months with them. And just to let people know we're just a regular family and we're doing it, changing diapers up in the middle of the night, <laughs> like everybody else. <laughs> okay. You know, as you share that with us, uh, uh, Dr. Deline, Dr. Mom, Dr. Musiliak, as, as you share that with us, when you are encountering, and, and I know that, that we're not going to talk about specific patients by name in that kind of situation. However, when you are when you encounter uh, patients, do you find that that there is a an expectation that you may not be not in a mean way uh, a regular mom, a regular family because nutrition. So when they bring their babies to you, is that they expect uh possibly different answers to them or for you to be able to just rattle things off or or are they patient and and do they allow you the opportunity to actually diagnose and 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 to share with them uh your, your findings or are they just kind of ready for things to happen right away um no i think the majority of patients um are like, what do you have to say? You know, and I think I always get this comment that patients who don't know yet that I have triplets, like when they find out I have triplets, they always make the comment, oh man, you're probably like, stop complaining because you just have one. <laughs> but no, most people, you know, especially my moms who have multiples, they'll ask like, hey, what'd you do to keep everybody on a routine? Or what'd you do to get everybody to sleep at the same time? So people do ask, and I and I am honest, like if it's not something that's medically proven or, you know, I didn't learn it in some medical textbook, I'll say, you know, hey, this isn't something I learned, but this is my personal experience, like what I did, I've done. Um in my experience, because it's so true, you know, being a pediatrician and then experiencing being a mother are two completely different yes. things. <laughs> because as a right. mom, you're in like survivor mode. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, okay. So, yeah. So, I think majority of people are open to what I have to say and advise. That's great. Well, listen, if, if I may tread these waters, <laughs> being a physician and being a mom, we have, we, we've, you, you very eloquently shared the thoughts about uh, the patients. How about your colleagues 
and other physicians who may be in a similar position uh, and those that do not have children. Do, do you find that the their expectations are the same, their attitudes are the same, or that they empathize or sympathize uh, when maybe uh, you, are, you are experiencing a, a irregular moment that any parent would experience? <laughs> Um, if that's a fair question. Yeah, I think the majority of uh, my colleagues are understanding, you know, if you're late or if you're like, hey, I got to go get the babies or, you know, the majority. But I have come across some who who aren't, you know, they they could care less that, you know, and it doesn't even have to be that you're that I'm a mama triplets like they could care less that, you know, you have to go on maternity leave or, you know, things like that. Um or bed rest because I had to go on bed rest. Uh, so, so I, so I have encountered both, but I will say again, the majority of people are um, nice about it. That you know they are understanding, and they probably feel sorry for me. <laughs> They're probably like, oh man. <laughs> okay. okay. Well, wow. Academically, you know, most of us, whether the people admit it or not or always very, uh, what word am I looking for? Uh, sometimes expectant of geniuses when it comes to uh, academic academia, you know, and say, wow, a physician, you know, know knowing, knowing that you have to take all of this chemistry and, and human anatomy. And I mean, the list just goes on and on and on and on and on. Did you find any of that exhausting or was it a, a, a welcomed uh, challenge or or could uh, did you ever at any time say, you know, uh, I, I'm not thinking about giving up. So I, that but uh, I could I could use a break right about now. So it's probably, academically. Yeah, it's probably half and half. Um, it's it's demanding. I mean, you have to be very um, persistent and you have to know that it's a long road and. Um, you just have to persevere. And what's the hardest part is when you're in your twenties and you're still in school and you know, you're everybody else that you went to college with finished there, <laughs> there okay. schooling, and now they're out making money. Um, but then there were the times where I would call my parents and I'd be crying and, I, and I'd be like, I don't know if I'm going to make help. this, this is, this is tough. And, <laughs> My mom, I'll never forget, she would always say, that's in my devotional. I talk about this story in my devotional. My mom would always say, don't worry, it's the last lap. This is the last lap. And, you know, now that I'm older, I'm like, mom, I was on the last lap forever. <laughs> you totally fooled me because <laughs> you always said you're on the last lap. Um, so, so I think it was half and half. It was challenging. I mean, by no means, medical school and residency is not easy at all. Um, but you know, at the same time, I enjoyed more, of course, I think any physician would say you enjoy the clinical aspect after, you know, after you get hands on and you're working with the patients, that's always a lot more fun than the textbook part and studying, like you said, organic chemistry, biology, you know, all that stuff, it gets better as you get further. So, you know, and, and, and balancing that. If you had to to take a survey and someone said to you, uh, what was the most difficult, the most challenging? Would it have been the academic aspect or with you being a mom of triplets, would it be uh, the mothering aspect? aspect? Oh, that's a good question. Um... I would say being a mom, because I feel as a mom, what I, the impact I have on my children, this is something that's going to affect their entire life. Whereas, you know, going to medical school, let, let's say I failed or something, I could always take it over, but I can never go back if I, you know, failed as a mom or if I was a bad mom, I can never bring back that moment in my child's life. Um, so I would say a mom. <laughs> <laughs> challenging. Okay. Oh, real nice. Now I've gone through the, that was the easy part of my life. <laughs> <This is hard. laughs> okay. You know, you know, and we ask that question, Dr. Musiliak, because it, there are so many 
so many, uh, uh, can I say, takes when it comes to being a mom. People have so many expectations. Uh, uh, unfortunately, and I mean unfortunately, everyone seems to have the 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 formula for parenting, and and uh, we we many times are so critical of moms without even having any knowledge of what it's like to be a mom. Yeah, yeah. true. Will you share just a little bit with us? Uh, do you ever encounter patients that 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 want to tell you uh, what it's like to 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 uh, be be the mom and the physician when you're trying to? <laughs> um yeah <laughs> i think um now with facebook social media google a lot of people look things up and for lack of a better word i sometimes you come across patients or parents who feel entitled so when they come into you they're like my child has an ear infection, so I need antibiotics, or my child has a sinus infection, so I need antibiotics. And let's say it's a cold, you know, you now have to prove and try to say, no, go against what they've already set their mind that I'm not leaving here without antibiotics for my child. Um, you have to like go into the whole thing that, hey, it's just a virus. We don't use antibiotics. You know, they'll they'll get better without the antibiotics. So, so yeah, I mean, they come in, I get that every day that people tell me how to treat them who haven't gone to medical school, <laughs> both adults and parents. <laughs> and, and, and may I ask, I, I don't want you to, to lose any friends, but <laughs> does, does it, you know, you know, there, there's an old saying just when you, when we're talking generically at home, many times you say, wow, they really work to my nerves today. Has, has there ever been an instance where you just have to take a time out and, and maybe walk away from the room or just kind of go and have a deep breath uh, when when you encounter uh, parents that, that insist that they are the ones that are truly the doctor mom and uh, you are there for their convenience? Um, I don't think I've ever had to walk out, like walk out of a room to come down. Because I will say one of my mentors in medical school, in residency, excuse me, um, he was also internal medicine and pediatrics. And he taught me one thing that as a physician, we can't force our patients to do anything. And we only make recommendations. Because I remember in my training, I would get frustrated when patients don't listen and they don't do what you say and they come back and their diabetes is still in control. <laughs> just like, what is happening here? And, you know, he just reminded me, you can't like beat yourself over the head because you, you can't be like the health patrol and look over every single patient's shoulder um, when they're at home. Uh, so, no, I haven't had to leave the room, but I have come out like frustrated and what has happened, this is something probably one day I'll talk on my doctor mom show about, but then what happens is you get a bad review because I'll tell you something. Normally people who have good experiences don't take time out. You know, the majority of people, if they have like a pretty good experience, they're like, oh yeah, you know, I'll go back or whatever. Um, but if somebody has a bad experience with anything, they'll make it a fact to like <laughs> get on, you know, if you're if you know your office has a Facebook page or to go on like WebMD or whatever to say that this is the worst doctor ever. And the majority of the time is because that patient or the parent just didn't get what they wanted. And okay. that's, that's one, that's one reason I don't like reviews. Cause I don't think they're a true reflection of, you know, you kind of have to take them with a grain of salt, but, but you know, that's the thing when you come out, when I come out of a room of that and I kind of stand firm because, because I will be honest, there's sometimes you're just like, Oh, I give up. And you try to say like, Hey, I'm going to give what we call like a safety antibiotic. So if the fever doesn't go away, you can start the antibiotic. Whereas I really well know that that mom's going to go home and fill that antibiotic that day and start giving it to her child. I know she's not going to wait. Um, but you know, but some, you know, I just try to pick my battles if they're, convince you know you i can only give them the information they do what they want with it so, yeah. so it's, it's kind of like a balancing act because you know i don't want all bad reviews online <laughs> of course <laughs> because people of didn't course. get their antibiotics that they wanted but so you know as as you share that if we can 
uh, uh, move move in, in the direction of the, the mom piece. Are you often uh, asked asked questions about parenting as a whole by 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 some of your patients, or do they primarily just uh, and I say just, but do they primarily uh, uh, inquire as to the medical piece, or are some of them uh, inquisitive or ask questions about parenting the, the child? Yeah, some some people do um, ask again, um, as I mentioned, just. Um, and and I guess that that's a really fine line. Um, again, because for example, if somebody's like, "Hey, how do you, how do you?" Because like for example, the triplets all nap at the same time. I mean, since they were born, we've kept them on a pretty. Um, I don't want to use like strict regimen. I don't want to be like we're like <laughs> we're like in the army here, but. Um, but we've we've just kept them on a routine. So 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 if somebody's like, how do you get all of them to sleep at the same time? You know, I'll kind of say the medical version, say like, and they're like, well, what do you do? You know, or do you think this is okay? But yeah, people would ask me like if their kids are teething, and I'm like, well, this is what you can do. People ask like, so what'd you do when your kids were teething? Um, or some people would say what would you do if this was your child and this was happening? Um, and I mean, I'm honest that, yeah. so yeah. So I mean, intermittently I, I do get asked just as a mom, what would you do in this scenario? Yeah. You know, and, and I was wondering about that. I, I uh, am a, am a certified parenting. I, I never call myself an expert, but, but I'm certified as, as, as a parenting coordinator. And, and I have found many times when you are sharing just, general parenting information uh you know sometimes people expect you to give them answers and when you give them when you don't give them what they're looking for they have a tendency to get really upset yeah and and yeah. and, and, and i was just wondering from a physician's seat you know if pa parents uh, come at you in that manner you know as as as, as asking you what they should do to rear their children etc yeah 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 and, and yeah. I mean, I try, I try not to give too much on the personal, you know, because I don't ever want anybody to say, well, she said this was okay. And, you know, there's no like medical yeah. basis. So that's why I do my medical thing. And if they ask like, Hey, what'd you do? And then, and then it's different. Cause I feel with different parents, parents, you have a different rapport, like each patient, you have a different rapport. You know, if I have a patient who I've seen them twice, um, that's different from somebody who I've been taking care of for three years. And, you know, I'm constantly seeing that family and you've just built that relationship with that family. So I think that's also a difference um, where you kind of feel out. Cause some people will take whatever you say exactly. And some, you know, some people will know it. So you're like, no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> <Said that>. so, <laughs> but <laughs> May I, and, and, and feel free to, to just pass this question, but but I, I'm going to attempt to ask you this question because there's that there's so much talk to during this time, and there's so much controversy about dads and moms and rearing kids and who's the better parent and and all of that. So, as a physician, as a parent, I, I know that 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 your children are still relatively young. And I know this is, and I'm just asking for your opinion. Would you say that there is a, that there are distinct roles as far as the dad and the mom when it comes to rearing children? And now let me, let me preface while I ask you that question. Many times, because I work with older children and, and older parents as a, a retired high school principal, you know, oftentimes I get that uh, from, from dads. Uh, is that they feel that there's a distinct role that moms play as opposed to them playing when it comes to rearing the child. And I'm talking about the holistic child. From your from your academic learning and from being a parent, although I know your children are still young, I know this is a long question. Would you would you say just an experience that, that you've had as a parent and with your experience as a physician that you have some some thoughts about that uh, as to parents having defining roles 
as to how they might rear their children. Um, so I'm going to say a disclaimer before I answer. <laughs> so I Please do. In trouble with anybody. So I will say, so my sister, um, who's also, you know, one of my best friends, um, she, my sister is a single mom. So, okay. so believe me, when I answer this, and again, I've never been in her place. So I never try to speak from an experience that I haven't been through personally. So I haven't been there, but I've just seen what she's gone through and what she has to do as a single mom. So I, I will say if both parents are available in a relationship, I personally don't necessarily think that there are set roles. Um, mm -hmm. in, the, in regards to like mom doesn't always have to be the one to change a diaper or mom doesn't always have to be the one to cook. And I guess maybe I'm a little spoiled because my dad growing up, I mean, sometimes my mom would still be working. My dad would get home and he would cook, you know, so I grew up with my dad cooking sometimes or helping to clean. So I was never in a situation where it's like, oh, you know, the kitchen is like where the woman belongs. And thank God, gentle Jesus worked it out because <laughs> my husband, he's the same way. I mean, Matt doesn't have an issue if he sees dirty clothes, he'll wash them. If the dishes are dirty, I mean, Matt, I'm going to put this out there. I can't believe I'm putting this out there. He's a better cook than I am. I mean, <laughs> like, so how I'm from Guyana, um, I don't know if people know about roti. So that's like our special bread. Matt okay. loves roti. So it's like, um, it's like a flat bread, almost like panini bread, but it tastes much better. Um, and Matt loves roti. So he, I don't know how to make roti, but Matt learned from my dad how to make okay. roti. And Matt will okay. cook roti. So, I mean, okay. and he just enjoys it. So, ultimately, I don't think there is. I think if, again, both parents are involved, I feel, you know, of course, it's always easier for a guy to teach a, kids to play football. I mean, there's just some stuff that, you know, like my babies, they can step all over my husband. He'll lay down and they'll, all three of them will pile up and say, let's build a tower. And then when they try to do that to me, I'm like, get off of me. Like, I'm not your dad. I can't carry the, you know, the 90 pounds of you put together. <laughs> so I think there's some things there that I think, you know, that do separate as, you know, as a woman, you can't do some stuff that a guy can do. And as a guy, you know, you're not going to do some things that a woman does. But I think as far as rearing, I think both parents can cook. I think both parents can bathe the kids, pick the kids up. Um, and again, just to use my sister as an example, she's a beast that, you know, yeah. she takes care of my niece. And I will say, I mean, mom and dad are there to help her too. But overall, she's just a great mom. And Chicklet hasn't had a dad in her life for years. And she she's not missing any, you know, she's not missing I, I don't mean it in that she's not missing anything. No. I mean, her personally, she, yes. you know, she yes. doesn't know that there's that gap in her life because Kenise has done such a good job filling it. Um, yes. So I hope that wasn't too confusing. <laughs> no, actually, actually, listen, listen, excellent. Because I, I wanted to ask that question and, 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 and it, probably, it may have been an unfair question, but it's a personal question. <laughs> I, I just finished writing a book called Mothers and Their Smen an introspective look at mothers rearing their sons. And uh -huh. one of the very questions I ask that, that really get a lot of men upset, I open up, I talk a lot of times about, and the question is this, am I my mother's son or my father's mistake? <laughs> and, and they really get upset. You know, a lot of men really get upset with me and some moms, you know, they say, well, why would you ask that question? Yeah. So I, I love to ask uh, mothers and women that question because quite honestly, what you've just shared about Matt and your dad, that's me. You know, I, I don't have a, a defined, if some, if clothes need washing, they need washing. Yep. You know, dishes need cleaning, they need cleaning, et cetera. And, and, and I'm 100% man, ex-football player, all that. Yeah. You know, I, and, and so I, I just, I, I like to, when we're having conversations, be they private or professional, it, there's just so many challenges that, that come with, comes with parenting. And, and many times people do not talk about it openly. 
And if, if, if I might share, even as a former athlete, and, and you may not want to answer this question, but when you talk about, you know, men and sports and things like that, oftentimes when you watch athletics, regardless of the sport, when not only guys, most of the guys, when we get our 15 seconds of fame in the camera, 99% of the time, first thing we say is hi, mom. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think I already know your answer. But I don't know if I already know your answer. Do you feel that that that, that moms have earned that right uh, for and 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 this this mind you comes from young men and women who yeah. have both parents at home. Yeah. So you know, um, but okay. Not to cut you, I I will say I feel no, there. I feel like there. There is something, not to say like a mom and dad's love is different, but there's just something about a mom's love. So I'll give you an example. When I went back to work, um, the girls who used to come and help us with the baby is, um, they, they were at home for a long time after they were born. Cause I was like, you know, nobody's trying to get daycare coals and all that stuff. Cause once one yeah. gets sick, everybody's sick. Um, so at night I would take out all their stuff, get their stuff ready. And Matt kept telling me, why are you killing yourself? You know, the girls are going to be here all day tomorrow. You know, they're going to be here. They're going to do that. That's what we're paying them for. Like, why are you killing yourself? But I'm just like, I'm their mom. Like I, I want to do it, you know, and even, you know, same thing with some other things, even though sometimes I may fuss and say, Oh, it's so hectic, you know, driving from work, I got to go pick them up like across town and then get back. And, but then again, if I had to change it, I wouldn't because I do enjoy like walking in and they're like screaming mom and giving you hugs. Um, but from my experience, just to backtrack, you know, even though I was born in a Christian home, both of my parents are pastors. I learned how to pray for my, for my mom and my grandma. And, um, I, I will say, I feel like most people, it's probably the same. I think I'm even going to take it even further. I feel like grandmothers play a huge role when it comes yes, to praying and learning how to pray. And, yes. um, and it's not like, it's not like my dad didn't care. Like my dad was a great role model. It was just something that, you know, I, we, my sister and I learned from my mother and my grandma, but I, I mean, I don't know. I, my husband, he'll like hug the kids and play with them. I, I think it's just that kids, perfect example, when a kid is sick or something's wrong, they automatically cry for mom. But when yes. they want to, you know, play and be rough, it's usually dad. And I think it's just something innate that as mothers, and I think as children, that you just have this sense of, hey, I just got to like thank my mom first. <laughs> <laughs> for and I don't know maybe that's a good like research project like what you know what in the body soul mind makes people like say thanks to their mom first or to look for their mom and, and you're so right about that um and maybe another thing too I think and I see it with my husband my, well both my husband and I are comp like competitive not with each other but just like in general and um He's he always says he's really athletic and he says, yeah, when the boys get big, I'm going to play basketball with them. I'm not going to let them win. <laughs> Where is me? I'm like, I let them win because I want to see them win. <laughs> so maybe that's how all moms and dads are The you know, the dads treat them a little try to like toughen up their kids. Whereas like moms are usually a little bit more nurturing. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know, but. I I don't have an answer, but of course, because I'm a mom, I would oh, say, yeah, perfect. keep saying, <laughs> keep that's, looking that's for your mom. But... Allow me, just, allow me just a second to <laughs> share with, with Brad. Brad say his dad's a pastor. Brad and, and Herbie, if you guys would like to take these two bottom cameras, feel free. You want to uh, ask uh, uh, Dr. Delene a question, or if you want to share some comments, please feel free to grab these cameras. We're not going to hold her all day. I'm going to uh, get out of Dr. Delene's ear here real quickly. If you guys uh, uh, want to ask her a question face to face, please grab the cameras and do so. But and I, I'm going to start winding this down, Dr. Delene. I know you've been here. You've been very kind. 
But, you know, I, I, I would like to ask this question. I think I asked you earlier when we started and, and Murphy kept doing his thing. I know your babies are still young, but as a mom, what would you prefer your children do differently from you than you did, let's say, at 16? Oh. Is there is there one thing maybe? I was good. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, that's that's so hard. Um I don't know. <laughs> I, you you what. know what I would probably say? I probably, because I, I will say I respect my parents a lot. And I don't know if because they just put the fear of God in my sister and I, you know, yeah. oh, overall, we were pretty good. Like, I I don't, and I think the other thing, I just never had a desire to, like, do drugs or, I mean, I just never had that desire to do anything like that. Um, I personally would probably say that as at a younger age like if opportunities offer themselves to just like yeah. jump at it because you never know where it'll take you i think and i think that you know it's different because mom and dad you know they they migrated to the united states i think there were some things like i wanted to join the air force i wanted to go through medical school through the air force and mom you know even though everything works out for the best but mom said you know she said no you're not a boy you know why are you gonna go join Air Force. And I'm like, mom, they're going to pay like for medical school. We don't have to worry about all that. Plus, I think F-16s are cool. <laughs> and uh, But mom nicks it. You know, she's mom. I can't like go against what my mom says. And um, so I feel with some things kind of like weighing and, you know, obviously being a mom, I'm sure I probably wouldn't want my kids joining the Air Force. Not because you don't want them to join the Air Force, but then you're always like, oh my gosh, what if they like go to war, or they're in combat or something like that, that you're worried about it. But I think, um, you know, just, just any opportunity that comes up, if you think it's good to talk it over with us first, okay. <laughs> and then we can make a family decision okay. <laughs> about it. And yeah, I would probably be the biggest thing. And I guess, I guess the other thing would be, you know, everybody, you always have like your crush and just realize this is, this is so probably lame, but realize that's probably not the person you're going to end up with for the rest of your life. <laughs> okay. The person okay. who you go to like your prom to, you know, um, your prom with is, you know, so those would be the big things, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Oh, no, hey, listen, Herbie, Herbie is asking, Herbie is saying that you think you would have had triplets had you joined the Air Force. Oh, um, probably. I, I mean, well, I had no control over the triplets, but right. um, I don't know. That would be tough. That would be tough, I think. Yeah. But I probably wouldn't because you know what? I probably wouldn't have met my husband because I met him in medical school. So then I would not have met my husband who thinks he has super sperm now. <laughs> so he has, okay. he has a shirt. We bought him a shirt that says, uh, real men make triplets. <laughs> Is that right? Okay. <laughs> so he loves okay. that shirt. So I probably wouldn't have met my, uh, my husband. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So probably not. They wouldn't have been here. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, listen. I know you have been so kind and and uh, so forthcoming, and we don't want, we certainly don't, do not want to wear out uh, wear out our welcome as you've come to, to with us. But I, I would like to ask you this last question, and, and and you know it's coming. You know everybody always asks, what advice would you give a young aspiring whatever the profession? But there's a young lady that goes to my church, uh -huh. and uh, I see she's not here tonight. I, I gave her the link, but she aspires to be a pediatrician. Awesome. She's been talking about being a pediatrician for over two years. Uh, she's a, a she, she carries a 3.89 GPA. She's uh, very, very studious and a very wonderful young lady. She's 14 years old. What advice would you give to her? Uh, let's say uh, classes that, that possibly she should start concentrating on uh, upon entering high school and, and the whole nine. If, if you can you know, give us a brief overview. I mean, I, I know you're not going to be a counselor and walk her through every everything. 
But if you can get well, she can contact me for coaching name. services if she would like. <laughs> okay. Okay. And her um, name, her name is Jaquela Miles. Oh, okay. She's, her name is Jaquela Miles. I'm more than happy. You can like hook her up with me for me to help her out. I'd be more than happy because I know looking back, I would love to have had somebody because in medical school, you know, they're so focused on teaching you how to become, you know, a great doctor when that when you come out in real life, there's so many other yeah. aspects to medicine that nobody even told you about. So then it's kind of like you're living and learning as you go. Yeah. But what I would tell Jaquela is Jaquela, do everything that has nothing to do with medicine right now. <laughs> because that's what you'll do the rest of your life. You know, if you do become a pediatrician, so I would say do everything that doesn't have to do with medicine because you will take your pre-med classes in college. You will take what you need in medical school. So what I've learned, it's better to be well-rounded. And even when she applies for med school and everything, they're looking for well-rounded people They're And, you know, of course they take people who are like bi and things like that, but of course they want a di diverse class. So they don't want everybody who's a biology major. Um, mm -hmm. So like I majored in psychology with a minor in biology. So, so they are wanting people who do other things and have other hobbies you don't have to you know everybody doesn't have to say i volunteered at the hospital you know since i was 10 you know <laughs> so it's okay to do other things um so i would do everything that doesn't have to do with medicine and um probably you can shadow a couple of doctors just to make sure that this is really what you want to do and the other thing like if i could change something going back you asked me what i would change if my kids if i could change something i'd probably learn more business aspect because again we come out knowing you know so much about medicine and how to take care of your patients but you know nothing about the business aspect um of medicine and now medicine's become such a corporate driven uh specialty that you know you have these all administrators who have nothing to do with medicine who are telling you how to how to do medicine um that just becomes frustrating um so, th so that would probably be my other thing um okay. to tell her see so let her let her enjoy everything else now. <laughs> wow wow thank you but you know see, see that is why please allow me to say this to you without being condescending that is why our young people need to listen to Dr. Mom, because guess what? This this old high school principal was telling her some of the opposite. You know, take this class, take that class. You know, forget. And see, I was totally wrong. I yeah. I say nationally, I was totally wrong. We have a pediatrician. Whoa. We have a pediatrician sitting here with us, uh, Dr. Delee Musilak, <laughs> telling me, Lars, you were wrong. <laughs> uh, well, I also think it's a cultural thing because in other countries, um, their physicians right out of high school go to medical school okay. and they don't do because they know that this is what I'm going to specialize in. And it's funny. I've had doctors say, you know, what a what a waste it is in in college because in medical school, you are really learning what you need to know and you go over pathophysiology, of course, with biology and everything that you learn in college, that gives you a foundation. But, um, but the other issue too, is I think people, if they went straight to medical school out of high school, I think the mature, the immaturity factor would also be there that, you know, Hey, that your head, you, you know, you have a good head on your shoulder and that you're ready to focus and do it. Um, but but yeah, definitely because because again, you'll do medicine the rest of your life. She's going to be reading about medicine, learning something new about medicine every day. So now again, I say do everything else but medicine okay. <laughs> <So> right now. <laughs> well, listen, on behalf of Jaquela Miles, let let me thank you, and 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 I'm going to have her dad uh, have her watch the replay of this show so that she can get your message firsthand. And so I, oh, I, I want to thank. What did Herbie, Herbie say here? I see my name and Dave Ramsey's name in the same sentence. I got to yeah. see what he said. I can't see. I love you, Dave Ramsey. Yeah, I, I see here. He says, "Dee's advice, Dave Ramsey, uh, Herbie, Herbie, you, you want to grab, uh, you want to grab this spot right quick and and share with uh, Doctor Mom." 
Uh, if he's comparing we... me to Dave Ramsey, uh, that's a compliment. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Hey, what's up, guys? Okay, here you come. Hey, what's up, Herbie? <laughs> good, good, good. No, I just meant that, like, Michaela was these advice plus Dave Ramsey, and it should be good. That's it. You're good. Okay. I love it. Thank you for the compliment. Yeah. <laughs> no, no problem. Thank you. Thank you, Herbie. Okay. And uh, Brad, Brad said he was just going to watch and enjoy. He said he, he thoroughly uh, has, has enjoyed you, and he appreciates. Let me see. Brad said thank you for... Uh, for your time, D. That was Herbie saying thank you You're for your welcome. time, D. And uh, Brad is saying, uh, uh, excuse me, the, uh, that he really enjoyed you, etc. And LOL, some of the things you were saying. So listen, <laughs> uh, we really, really want to thank you for taking the time to join us on the Nobody Asked Me Guy Show. Will you share, please, uh, with our listeners that that are here with us live and the ones that will be watching the rebroadcast? Will you share with us how? how they may be able to contact you for further questions or just uh, just to, to say hi or, or, yeah. or ask for medical advice. Yes. So you can feel more than free to email me at drmomshow, D-R-M-O-M-S-H-O-W at gmail.com. And I'll give Mr. Lars all this information too so he has it. Um, I love getting topics for the show. If you have any topics you'll like me to cover, I love – um, doing that. Um, and hopefully I told Mr. Lars, I'll have him on my show as a special guest. <laughs> we'll set oh, it up. Um, and then you can check me out on YouTube. It's called the Dr. Mom show. You can just type that in and you'll catch it and you'll get to see the tripsies there. Um, we have a tripsy clip and I'm hoping to start, um, if time allows me to do a tripsy travel because they've gone to already, I think like six or seven countries. So I said, I'm going to wow. throw some videos on there of them traveling. Cause they're just so sweet. Um, and then my website is just www.delinemuchalak.com. That's my name. And, um, then I'm so excited. I do have, um, one book that is already published. My first book is a uh, devotional. It's a women's devotional. Sorry guys, even though I'm going to have to write a guy's devotional, get with my husband and write a guy's devotional. But if you have a wife, a mom, a grandmother, aunt, you know, somebody at work, um, a special lady in your life. Um, I did write the devotional and, um, it's called mom M O M and it stands for meditate, overcome, motivate. And the goal of my devotional was really, um, just to inspire women. Um, a lot of them are encouraging verses and then women in the Bible that I take for my daily devotion to remind women just of God's promises to us that, you know, we are loved, we are beautiful. I think a lot of times we forget that because we get caught up with our families, with our jobs. Um, I think moms and women in general are pretty good about putting their own goals on the back burner and saying yes to everybody else. So it's just a reminder for moms who they are and just women in general who they are. And then I'm super excited about my first children's book. It got released on Amazon. My ebook came out for pre-order and I got a bestseller. Yay! So wow. I'm very excited about that. Thank you. Um, so you can pre-order that. It was for 99 cents, but now it's $6.99. <laughs> um, and that will come out. The hard uh, book will come out um, probably in September. That'll be available right now. It's still an ebook. Thank you very much. Um, and that's about the trip season our family, I'm hoping that will become a series because I really did enjoy writing that. Um, and uh, the other thing that I'm currently working on is a, what I call a healthy parenting coaching. Um, so the name of my coaching services is called, see, I got to get guys involved here, but the name of my parenting coaching is called Maxima Mom. And it's Think Life, Live Life, Love Life. And my goal is to encourage um, empower and to elevate women. And again, sorry guys, I don't mean to focus on women, but just again, as a mom, I really enjoy speaking to moms and being motivating and helping them to get out there. I know a lot of people, you know, my patients when they're like, Oh, you have a book and you have the Dr. Mom show. When do you even do that? Um, but my goal is to tell moms, you can do it. Like if you want to write a book, you can do it. You can do it. Um, so I am super excited about Maximum Mom. I'm definitely excited about that. So hopefully you'll hear about that soon. And I'm just working on trying to get some 
seminars and motivational speaking um, gigs and some workshops together. Um, so yeah, so a lot of things in the pipeline in the future. I do have you guys are going to kill me. You're going to be leaving this room the more I talk here. But <laughs> I would like no, to go <laughs> next next year. I, I'm working on a mommy and me devotional um, with a workbook, and I am excited about that. I'm a huge, and this is the pediatrician coming out in me, just um, anti bullying, anti racism, and I think part of it is just you know my kids. Just you know, another disclaimer: my husband's white. You know, both of us got some jungle fever going on here. <laughs> but we made some pretty cute kids, though. <laughs> um, but just as, uh, just just in that, you know, I have to think of that not only for myself, but my ch children that when they go to school about bullying or people saying that, hey, you're not all whatever one race, you know, you're mixed. Because um, I think nowadays people are just mean. You can be any race and people make fun of you or you can be beautiful and people still somehow find something to make fun. Uh, so my mommy and me with um, the workbook is really I'm going to have a daily devotion and I'm going to use uh, um, just regular memory verses, memory verses I grew up with because I feel a lot of parents now, I don't think people do memory verses anymore to teach their kids, um, but it will have a corresponding affirmation for parents to tell their kids. So for example, the first one I wrote about was just John 3.16. That's like everybody's first verse that you learn. And in my workbook for that day, I wrote, you know, like God gave his best gift like Jesus was his best gift that he could give so then in my book I have the parent asking the child if you could give any gift what would be the biggest gift or most special gift that you could give or receive and then the child right. also asks their like mom you know or dad their parent you know what gift would you want or what gift would be the biggest gift that you would give and on that day you know, the affirmation is that you are like, you are my special gift, like God gave you to me and you're my favorite gift. Because again, you know, once again, I think it's hard because now we get caught up with work and things like that. And we don't always tell our kids how much we love them, how special they are, you know, because a lot of times if they're doing something bad, you're like, <laughs> them, and you can't be like, Hey, you're special. Um, so I think it's a good way to just build their self esteem. And um, I'm, I'm just really big on that. Because now with social media, you know, everybody puts on what's, what's, positive and you know even i'm guilty of that you put it when big things are happening people don't put when they're discouraged or when bad things happen most of the time so when others look at it who don't have that you know people get depressed people are like killing themselves i have teenagers coming to me and they're depressed because some other girl in their class got a car or got all these clothes or a new bedroom set and um half of the time you don't even know if it's real you know people are friends with people that they really don't even know in real life. So you don't even know if what they're saying is true or false. Um, so, so that's something dear to my heart. So I'm hoping that'll come out in the spring and next year. I really do want to make God really just, just laid this on my heart that I want to write a mommy and me recipe book, but it's going to be called mommy and me recipes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just some fun uh, little basic recipes and inside I do want to put some like kid activities like you know put in order the measuring cups from like small to big just so there's something else that the kids can do in the book but um, but yeah I don't know how I'm doing all of this <laughs> but... hey you are doing it because that's the person that you are <laughs> And that's Thank that's you. why you're doing it. And, and as you've you. already shared, you know, you, you said earlier that you want to be a servant, you know, as, as you talked about being a pediatrician and, and, and having the life. You are so full of life. So room is made, you know, it's that God will make make room for you, for your gifts. Thank you. So God Thank is just you. making room for your gifts. Thank you. That's how you're doing it. Yeah. So <laughs> please, please allow me to affirm that God is just making room for your gifts. Thank you so much. I claim it. it. Yes. I claim it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just believing God. And this is from my heart because ultimately, you know, my husband, and I really want to do medical missionary work. And the more we look into it, you know, you don't, you don't get paid for medical missionary work. And now of course with the children, it's hard and, um, 
you know, I really just want to be in that position that I can say, hey, we're going for a couple months. We're going to give back. And I would love to have, I really would love to just have a free clinic and say, hey, this is my clinic. Show up and you'll get health care. You know, wow. um, that. Cause that's why I got into medicine. That's why sometimes it's just frustrating when people are telling you how to serve people. But, um, but that's ultimately what I would love to do. Uh, that's why I keep that's praying this will be successful. <laughs> that's great. That's great. That's so. great. Well, listen. Wow. Wow. Hey, you know, I, I think I said, and I think I know I've said many times on my show about Renaissance people, and and I and I please let me say this: I consider myself extremely blessed because God keeps putting all of these Renaissance people mm. in my path, and I'm sitting here with Dr. Delene Muslag, Dr. Mom, and you know you're such a Renaissance person, and people can tell when things are staged. And when they are original, and you are definitely an original. Well, thank you. And I am so grateful that you are here. And and Herbie and and Brad have been with us throughout their entire time. And uh, what does that say? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> they, thank you very much, Herbie and Brad. Yeah. Yes. So listen, we appreciate you, and I'll just share very briefly uh, with our with our, our guests that'll be watching. Uh, this this replay is that you can contact me at www.dyingonmyfeet.com. You will find all of my social media sites there, uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, the whole nine. And again, I encourage you to purchase the book, Mothers and Their Smen, an introspective look at mothers rearing their sons. And yes, I always ask this question. Am I my mother's son or my father's mistake? Now think about that. And I want to have that discussion with you. We, we want to take this discussion all over the world. So guys, join us again. Again, help me thank Dr. Mom. Uh, we have put some of her information on the screen. Uh, uh, Dr. Delaney Muslag has shared with you uh, how you may contact her. Please follow up and do that. Please go to her YouTube site and subscribe to her YouTube site as well. So listen, again, thank you for being with us. Uh, next week, Dr. Muslak, we will have none other than attorney, excuse me, uh, Robert Reed. Robert Reed is an NAACP field per person. He's an attorney uh, uh, from uh, Lansing, Michigan, and he'll be talking about voter rights, voter registration. He'll be explaining uh, uh, with, our, with, with our audience uh, about uh, the electoral vote and how votes count and how people get deleted from the voter rolls, etc. So we just want to inspire our listeners uh, to awesome. to come back next week at uh, seven o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. We always have our links entered on our Facebook site so that you can join. So listen, thank you very much yes. again yes. Thank you for being here with us. I'll have to I'll have forward. to make sure I come to that. Maybe he can tell me how I can be Surgeon General. <laughs> yes, well, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> well, please, 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 please join us on, on awesome. uh, uh, August 16th, 7 o'clock right. p.m. right here on the Nobody Asked Me Guy show. Again, we thank our wonderful guest. We, we thank, thank all you. of you that are viewing. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at some of my other monitors, and, and, and I do want to say to you before I get off, you've been getting stars and thumbs up all oh, over the place. So awesome. You thank you, everybody. You've certainly been a hit. So, guys, <laughs> we want to bid everyone good night. And we ask you to come back again, but go to Dr. Musliak's site. Make sure you subscribe to her YouTube and check out her website. Everybody have a blessed and great night. And again, Dr. Musliak, I understand that August 9th is your birthday. Birthday so month. Want, yeah. <laughs> we want to wish you a happy birthday. Thank you so and much. And have a great, great evening. Thank you. Good night, everybody.